Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to the Sim Hanger, the Sim Hanger for all things flight sim related. Well, it's been a long time coming, but pre-orders are starting to ship now. I'm talking, of course, about the Honeycomb Yoke, the Alpha Flight Control. Today, we're going to be having a look at what do you get, the setup, and also the configuration for your flight simulator. Let's get started. The product arrives very suitably packed. Once the outer box is removed, the box containing the yoke has a printed outer sleeve. The front of that sleeve shows a picture of the product and the back shows a number of features of the product as well as the five-year warranty. The packaging within the box containing the yoke is robust and more than adequate to meet the normal demands of transit handling. It's clear that Honeycomb have not economized in this regard. The yoke comes with a simple and straightforward instruction manual. It's worth a quick two minute read. It also comes with two very sturdy, well-made metal clamps, which screw to the desktop or your mounting surface. It has a separate mounting plate and can be mounted using the clamps or alternatively, if being fixed onto a smooth surface, the suction or sticky pad can be used. It's very sticky. Remove the plastic, place it and push it down firmly. In order to release it, use the lugs at the end and that will just raise the mount slightly so you can peel back the mount plate itself. If you don't want to use the sticky pad, then no problem, use the traditional mounting method. And the clamps locate on a lug, place it on your desktop and fasten it in the traditional manner. Comes with a USB-C to USB connector. And it also includes a small cable for connecting the yoke to the main body of the product. The product is delivered with a square plastic mounting at the front of the dome to allow for the connection of various panels, etc. If you don't want that and prefer just the dome shape, it can be removed. This faceplate has a number of screw locations as indicated. Although the yoke is made almost entirely out of plastic, there is a quality feel to this product. The yoke itself has got numerous switches on. There's positive click and reaction to those by pressing them. Includes a hat switch. The plastic is in a dual color with two different feels. The matte feels rubbery and the shiny plastic on the top feels smooth and silky. The yoke includes a five position ignition switch with off left and right and both magnetos and start. In addition, it has nine switches. The switches cover a variety of functions, but they can be configured to suit you, as we'll be seeing later on. The mounting mechanism is fairly straightforward. There's a center pin on the mount and the underside of the yoke goes over that and then the yoke is pushed forward to lock into place. There's a number of wheels at the back which can be screwed down and they in turn locate on a lug. And as you push the yoke forward as fitting it, there are a number of front areas where it will fit onto the lug. So it's a very secure and stable fitting once it's clamped or stuck to your tabletop. If you'd like to see more from SimHanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. To connect the switches on the yoke itself, we use the supplied cable, fits in the back of the yoke and clips in at the base of the main body of the yoke. My clamp is now securely mounted on my desktop and now time to put the yoke onto the mount. Looking for that locator and pushing it forward and then using the wheels at the back to screw down onto the small lugs to make a secure fitting. The USB-C end of the cable is plugged into the back of the yoke and there's a small button on the back 
and as you press it it will cycle through the different intensities of the light at the front of the yoke. And now it's time finally to get our hands on the yoke itself. There's quite a surprising amount of resistance as you push forward or pull back. Not as much on the roll, 90 degrees in each direction, which is great, but quite a strong resistance forward and back. More than I expected, to be honest, but it's, I'm going to quite enjoy that. There's no D10 for center position, but this yoke doesn't need it. It centers by itself. It is a little noisy pushing it in and out. It seems to be rubbing slightly. Once I've got the engines roaring away though, I won't hear that. I'm a little surprised nonetheless. Let's give this yoke a go. Now just starting up. Yep, that all works correctly. The start position on the ignition is not spring loaded, so it needs to be manually turned back. Taking off from Courcheval, she responds very nicely to the yoke input, just gently pulling back. I can feel the pressure, the back pressure on the yoke, which is something I didn't experience with my Cessna yoke, my Satec yoke. Very sensitive. For those of you that have ever flown a real aircraft, one of the surprises for many is just how small and how little input is required on the yoke for the aircraft to react. This is much more realistic than what uh, the yoke I've had in the past. Of course, sensitivities can be adjusted as necessary to suit personal preference. Very nice, just giving it uh, the yoke a bit of a workout here with some erratic flying. There's definitely more pressure in the ascent or descent mode, pushing forward or back as opposed to the roll, but there is still feedback on the roll. Very nice. This is definitely an improvement on what I had before. All aspects of this yoke are configurable and we'll now take a quick look at the configuration options available. In the manual it directs you to Honeycomb's website flyhoneycomb.com for the drivers and configurator and that's down at the bottom of the page. You'll find downloads, click on that and you'll be given two options. One for Microsoft Flight Simulator X which also covers Steam Edition and one for Prepared. It's only a small program, a quick download. Once it's on your desktop then install it. After the install, you'll see an icon on your desktop, Yoke Input. Open that and you're presented with the configurator. The first problem I encountered was that the manual was in German. I tried to reinstall, but once again it was in German. Perhaps I did something wrong. You get an option to choose the flight simulator. And you also have an option to load any templates. And a number of templates have been preloaded but very few one would expect that to grow over time make sure that your yoke is on while the configurator is on activating a button or switch on your yoke will highlight what that function is what is not clear to me and if anybody knows i'd appreciate some help how do you change that it seems to be requiring some form of sim input directly here into the configurator which is not very user friendly. It can of course be configured directly in your sim as per normal. For X-Plane, well it's very different. The Honeycomb is already set up in the latest version of X-Plane. The user interface is very easy to follow and Activating a button or a switch highlights exactly what that function does. As you move from one area to another, so the visual display with the numbering changes. For each item there is an edit along the right hand side and by clicking on the edit function allows you a wide array choices of things that you want. Just type in at the top to narrow the search for the function you're looking for, choose it and then click apply. It's as simple as that.
Well, that was my first look at Honeycomb's new yoke, the Alpha Flight Control. And overall, well, I've got to say I'm impressed. It's priced at 249 and at that sort of price point, well, it's well geared to compete against the Satec and CH products in the market. And overall, in my opinion, better value for money. If you'd like to see more from Simhanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. While the product is brand new in the market and still a little bit of work needs to be done in terms of the software and the configurator, particularly for FSX, FSX Steam Edition and Prepared. It doesn't seem easy or intuitive enough to really be useful, but hopefully we'll see some improvements. The yoke is also a little noisy on the push forward and pull back, but really that's a minor point. And overall, the benefits and value far outweigh any negatives. So for me, it's a 9 out of 10. Well done, Honeycomb. I hope you enjoyed this and found it informative. See you soon and bye for now.